All right, so I'm out and about on a field trip. I was grading papers, and uh, I came across, quite honestly, across gender. Uh, she had mentioned something about Civil War medicine in the, the hospitals, and that got me thinking about the things uh, that we have here in Kansas City. This is called Union Cemetery. This is just south of uh, Crown Center. And what it is, we, well, this is sound though, right? This is a burial site and grave site right in the side of Kansas City. Right in the, just, you can see, we're just to the east over the hill there is the Liberty Memorial. So I get it, there it is, right behind the tree. But these are gravestones from the Civil War period. Some are newer. Some are as late as the 1920s, World War I era. But some of these in here are actually Civil War soldiers who died in a battle right around uh, the plaza area, actually. And the soldiers that died, one of the things she mentioned was there was no way to embalm, so there was no way to get the body back home. And so what happened was that soldiers were buried at the site where they died. It was just easier because there was no way to keep them. I'm going to zoom in on one here. I just noticed this is actually a Union soldier, first lieutenant, George B. Uh, I have to, Byer, it looks like. I can't quite see. Um, 1831 to 1863. So my car is shaking a little bit because the engine's going. I got it we'll zoomed way in. He's from Ohio. Um, but this is, it's called Union Cemetery. And this is actually where a lot of, a lot of Union soldiers were buried here. I don't know much about the Confederacy. I haven't been up here. This would have been on the north side of the battle site. So of course, this would have been where the Union Army was. Um, I'm not encouraging at all to come out here. I'm, I'm staying in my car and I'm driving around. I'm not getting out to, to wander too much. Um, here's another one. Here's a, can't see very well from this side, but as I was pulling up. So, let's see if I can come around to the other side. Oh, there's a 10th Kansas Infantry. I'm sorry, there it is. Lieutenant in the Kansas Infantry. Um, but I'm leaning outside my car window. I got my mask on, taking the precautions necessary. But I want to show you guys that we have a lot of history here in Kansas City. There's the Illinois Infantry. But you can come up here and look around. It's a nice little field trip. If your family's going through a crazy, just wants to get out in the car, this would be a place to come. So, something to look around at from the car. A lot of stuff to see. Let me zoom out a little bit. So, sorry, just a little wobbly there, wasn't it? Here's one that. Alexander Majors, this house is just up the way. And actually, that comes to another thing that I noticed. Um, Alexander Majors, honor to Alexander Majors, he was a member of the firm of Russell Majors and Waddell, founders, owners, and operators of the Pony Express. This marks his grave. He died uh, in 1900. His home is just a little further south. And it's open for tours. Not right now, but when things open back up, his home is open for tours. And if I'm not mistaken, they actually used his house as a field hospital to operate on soldiers who were injured during the, the battle. And so you can actually tour his house. There's that, and there's the uh, Warnell House, also down Warnell Road, which is further south and was used as a Confederate hospital, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's down by Ward Parkway, uh, the AMC on Ward Parkway. So drive a little further into here. There's a marker number six. I'm going to have to swing around try to catch that. Some key parts to see here. Possibly. Okay, so some of the soldiers who weren't very important were the line soldiers. It's two graves I showed you earlier were lieutenants. This would probably be no name, nothing soldiers, if anything. And these are Civil War, and I believe this part comes into some, that these were soldiers who just didn't really... They weren't very fancy, they weren't very rich, they didn't have the money that those lieutenants had, and so they got a second-rate burial. Uh, this is somebody put in later, much, much later, died in 1910, but that even looks like a newer stone than that. 
But uh, 6th West Virginia Infantry, Civil War, fought for the, the Union. But he died after the war was over. So, he died on the Santa Fe Trail. Ooh, this looks interesting. I told you I'd drive with a, I got a curve coming up, so I'm gonna have to pause again. But let me hold this steady. Ooh. Died on the Santa Fe Trail between Council Grove, Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri. Member of Georgia State Legislature, Mexican War veteran, first territorial governor of New Mexico. So they must have brought his body along with them and buried it here. All right, way up there, number two. That's the, one of the youngest uh, people to earn the Medal of Honor. He was, I believe it said 15 years old when he earned it in 25 days, I mean, a little over 15 years old. He was a, a uh, camp follower. He was not a soldier. But in a battle, the Union lost their colors. Their flag was grabbed by the Confederacy. He raced across, grabbed it back up, brought it back over, became a hero for that. But because he was not a soldier, the doctors refused to operate on him. And so he died of his injuries, but he's buried here. Okay, I'm not gonna get out and look at this, but this is a Chinese burial. Uh, There's some Chinese burials right here. That This was unique. There were a lot of Chinese that lived in the area during this time period. A lot of Chinese worked in the railroad coming from the west. The Irish were coming from the east. And of course, Kansas City was kind of a, a central ground for the groups to kind of meet up after the Transcontinental Railroad was completed in 1869. But remember, they okayed in 1854 to build that Transcontinental Railroad. The Chinese were the laborers from the, the west, the Irish from the east, because they were both immigrant populations that nobody really cared for, nobody really worried about, and they were, were willing to work for very, very, very cheap labor. They didn't quite fit in with everyone else. There was a lot of anti-Irish, anti-Chinese sentiment. Um, the notes that I have here say that the Irish grave sites, there are grave sites throughout the cemetery, but this, there's four of them here, but I'm not going to get out to look until I'll come back later. But that what was interesting is that most Chinese were shipped back home when they died to be buried with their ancestors rather than staying here where they died. So that's an interesting little fact for you. So, but a lot going on there. All right, this is the, the uh, burial site of George Caleb Bingham. And Bingham was a painter and a statesman for the state of Missouri. Uh, he was very, very important uh, to us. We did a lot of, uh, ooh, clear. Uh, we did a lot of, of his paintings we looked at in school before we left. And the one that's up, order number 11, where they forced all of the uh, women into Kansas City from the outlying counties, that was painted by George Caleb Bingham, a very famous painter in Missouri history. So that's his gravesite. Just nice tie-ins.